Asthma felt anything but normal. It was time for a new normal with Nucala. Nucala is a once monthly add on treatment for severe eosinophilic asthma that can mean less oral steroids, not for sudden breathing problems. Allergic reactions can occur. Get help right away for swelling of face, mouth, tongue, or trouble breathing. Infections that can cause shingles have occurred. Don't stop steroids unless told by your doctor. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection. May cause headache, injection site reactions, back pain, and fatigue. Ask your asthma specialist about a new normal with Nucala. Tomorrow on ET, our epic exclusive with Chip and Joanna Gaines in Waco, Texas. Was there ever a point where you're like, Chip, why do we need a castle? Thank you for stepping right on the nerve, right off the bat. Their biggest fixer-upper ever. And planning for more kids? I think the more the merrier. I think this what she meant done. to say, though. What did I mean you. to say? Chip wow. was so happy to have more kids, and then he was like, Breaks, breaks. They're so much fun. I get it. Yeah, they are. I love those guys. Now, before we go, congrats to Jimmy Fallon. And Happening now. A San Antonio police officer has been fired, but not charged for shooting a teenager who was eating a burger in a McDonald's parking lot. Coming up when the police chief says charges could come. And not just one, but two cold fronts to talk about, both of which will have different impacts on our area. We'll talk about it in just a bit. A shot of tequila with a slice of pink. How one woman is changing the man's world of tequila making. The News at 5 starts right now. Fired but not charged, but that could soon change. The San Antonio police chief saying former officer James Brennan could see charges as soon as this week for shooting a 17-year-old in a McDonald's parking lot a little more than a week ago. Act 4 SA and some other organizations now rallying in protest because they believe that the charges needed to be filed sooner rather than later. That rally set to start outside of San Antonio Police Headquarters shortly, and that is where John Paul Barajas is standing by. John Paul, what's the latest on this? Steve, Ursula, the crowd isn't here just yet, but preparations are already underway. They got signs set up, and they're hoping that people will be showing up here in the next 30 minutes or so. But the reason why they're here, the reason why they're so frustrated is former officer Brennan is, although he is fired, he's walking the streets free right now. Meanwhile, 17-year-old Eric Cantu is in the hospital fighting for his life. We're about to show you that body cam video, but do want to warn you that it is graphic. Before the initial shots, Brennan calls for backup, doesn't wait, goes to Gantu's car, opens the door without warning. The teen looks startled, burger in hand, he reverses, and that's when Brennan fires multiple rounds. And as Gantu drives away, Brennan continues to fire. Police Chief William McManus says everything in the video is against protocol, and that SAPD officers are trained to only ever shoot at a vehicle if they're in danger or someone else is. The video was, was horrific. Uh, there's no question in anybody's mind looking at that video that the shooting is, is not justified. And uh, the, it, took us, uh, it took us a couple of days to terminate uh, Brennan, but he was gone pretty quickly. The Cantu family has put out this statement about Eric that reads in part, he is still unconscious and is on life support. We'd like to correct any misrepresentation that Eric is in stable condition or he is going to be fine. That is not true. Every breath is a struggle. Again, the police chief says he expects charges to be filed before the end of the week, and he adds that charges could be upgraded to murder if Cantu doesn't make it. At Public Safety Headquarters, John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, John Paul. We'll keep an eye on that situation there. Meantime, new at five, a welfare check uncovering the worst of fears. San Antonio police found a man's body in the 2900 block of Hatton Street near Couples Road. That's over on the west side. They were called there around 830 this morning for the welfare check. Someone had reported that the homeowner hadn't been seen since yesterday. That's when they found the man dead inside. Police think it may be suspicious, but they haven't said why that is. We're still waiting to learn more details from the Bear County Medical Examiner. His assignment was question a mom accused of murder. Well, now he's taking the witness stand. Today, testimony continued in the Jessica Briones murder trial. She's charged with the death of her daughter after she took her to a police substation unresponsive with multiple injuries back in 2017. Her daughter, four-year-old Olivia, later died at a university, excuse me, died at University Hospital. That same day, SAPD Detective Raul Juarez interrogated Briones, 
Today he testified against her and described her demeanor during the interview. She was calm. We talked. She was a little bit upset, um, but I mean, she communicated fine. Detective Juarez says he also had to closely examine a little Olivia's injuries. If found guilty, Briones is facing up to life in prison. Coming up at six, more of that interrogation video and what Briones had to say about injuries her daughter received. Coming up. A top story tonight uh, from overnight. Trouble downtown sending a man behind bars and another to the hospital. It happened around 1230 this morning when police were called to the intersection of East Market and South Alamo Street. A 25 year old man apparently got into an argument with three women in front of the McDonald's there. He threw one of their purses and a cell phone into the Riverwalk, according to the police report. The 51 year old man tried to help and the two started fighting. That's when the 25 year old allegedly stabbed him in the back twice. That suspect booked and charged on an aggravated assault charge with a deadly weapon. Held a gunpoint tied up and threatened with a machete. That was a scary situation that two employees and a shopper found themselves in last week. Now San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers need your help in finding the man responsible. Take a look at these photos. Police say this man walked into the Supernova Smoke Shop in the 4000 block of West Avenue last Friday. Pretend to be a shopper. He pulled out a gun, forced the employees and another shopper to zip tie each other. The suspect then took money from the register and items from the store, but stuck around for more than 20 minutes. It wasn't until they told him police were on their way that he actually pulled out the machete and backed out of the store. If you recognize this guy, call Crime Stoppers at 224-STOP. That is 224-7867. Throughout the night tonight, firefighters are going to be keeping an eye and eye on what was a huge fire in New Braunfels. The flames and smoke coming from piles of mulch at a business off of Psalms Road. New Braunfels firefighters say that they initially found two piles of mulch on fire at Eggmeyer land near uh, the clearing there at Eggmeyer around one in the morning. The flames began spreading and fire crews, along with some of the others helping hands, tried work to work hard to put out this fire. They can use all the help they can get. It's 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 a daunting task and it's a dangerous task too. The mulch piles, they get hot in the center. Um, they water them, but sometimes you just can't keep up with the water and it, it turns into flame. The fire didn't do any damage to homes and businesses nearby and no one was hurt. Psalms Road, though, was shut down this morning. It since reopened, but drivers need to be careful as fire crews will again, as we said, be out there again tonight. Well, thanks to smoke detectors and better building codes, the number of house fires has dropped by half since the 1980s. Now the bad news, the fires that do happen are much deadlier. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains why and what you can do now to protect your family. When this clothes dryer caught fire, Simon Glensek's family had to get out fast. So the smoke had just fallen so fast. I noticed that it doesn't really hover at the top. It kind of goes all over the place, but it just went so fast. It just boggles my mind how fast it goes. House fires today burn faster and hotter and are deadlier than ever. A big reason is time. 40 years ago, you would have had 17 minutes to get out of a house on fire. Today, just three. So what's changed? For one thing, floor plans are open. With fewer walls and doors, fires travel faster. Then there's today's furniture. Synthetic materials like foam, plastic, or particle board burn faster than materials like solid wood. So to protect your home, have at least one smoke detector and one class ABC fire extinguisher on each floor and check them monthly. Smoke detectors save lives. Consumer Reports recommends these dual sensor models from First Alert and Kid A. They detect both flaming and smoldering fires. Know how to use your extinguisher before you need it. And fire experts recommend keeping bedroom doors closed at night because this can act as a barrier, keeping fire out. Also, don't leave lithium-ion batteries, like for power tools, charging overnight. If you have an outlet that doesn't grip the plug, it's time to change it and have a family escape plan and rehearse it. We always talked about go by the tree, anything like that. You always sit by the tree, we'll meet up right here. That does work. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News.
We are less than one month away from the midterm elections and changes seem to be looming. A state judge has now ordered the Bear County Elections Department to add more than 100 voting locations in just a matter of weeks. Now this comes after the Texas Civil Rights Project or TCRP filed a lawsuit to close more than 40 polling sites ahead of November 8th. TCRP argues less polling locations do not reflect the county's growth over the years. For a voter in Bayer County, it is not an impediment in terms of distance or location to be able to vote, right? Um, so more, more locations just means more opportunities to vote, especially because it is a countywide polling uh, county, which means that you can go vote in any polling location in the county. Coming up at 6, Alicia Barrera has more about the county's deadline to add these new polling locations. And if you aren't registered to vote yet, don't forget this is the deadline. So if you want to cast your vote on November 8th, you need to be sure to double check you're ready. Right now on KSET.com, we can make sure you are already registered. All you have to do is scan the QR code that's on your screen right now. And remember, you're eligible if you are or will turn 18 by Election Day. Check out traffic on this Tuesday, 5.07 in the afternoon, and I-10 in Frio, I-10 at Hackberry. That is a busy spot right there. You can see traffic is backing up in I-35 at Loop 410. Also backing up, no major traffic accidents to tell you about. What you're seeing here, just the normal give and take of rush hour. And today, temperatures above average from 65 in the morning to 87 in the afternoon. By the way, the average high temperature is 84, and we're going to be well above that, even warmer than today in the next several days. But right now, mostly just 80s, 89 Floresville. Eagle Pass right now at 88, along with shirts. You go to New Braunfels, 88. Myco currently at 86 degrees. And pretty quiet out there this evening, mostly clear. A bit of a breeze at times, southeast at 5 to 15, and then turning humid overnight. Temperatures gradually falling through the 80s and 70s. Coming up, two cold fronts to talk about, different impacts from each, and Tropical Storm Carl now in the Gulf. I'll have an update in a bit. Thank you, Adam. She's the first, but not the only, and certainly not the last, the first woman of Mexican tequila celebrating 30 plus years in a business that initially didn't welcome her in. Today, she's a leading expert, and she's leading the way for more women to join her ranks and make tequila in a way that nobody else does. Deep in Jalisco, Mexico, Meli Barajas Cardenas takes blue agave, raised in special artesian waters, and turns it into a top award-winning tequila. There's a reposado, a blanco, an anejo, and an extra anejo. The handmade and oxygenated tequila, one of a kind for many reasons. First, it was made by the first woman of tequila in Mexico. Es un mundo de hombres. Cuando yo empecé hace 25 años, it's a man's world. I was only 25 years old, so those men watching this little girl starting in the tequila world, it was hard. But her father loved a good tequila, so she kept at it, starting Leyenda de Mexico, a brand 100% produced by women. I'm very happy to employ only women. They see it's hard work, but since I'm a woman, they know they can do it also. It's a magical thing. But she took it to a new level. Her tequila is made by a staff of women who cut the agave, process it in adobe ovens in the earth, distill it, age it, bottle it, and even decorate it. The pretty packaging, a hand-beaded bag over a bottle that'll run you $350 or more. And yes, the bag was made by women in Mexico too. El poder de las mujeres. 100% natural, no químicos. Barajas is now marketing in the U.S., holding tequila tasting luncheons like this one at Bistro 09. She is quite a lady. Today, Baraja says that other women come to her for advice and help, hoping that they can take over maybe their family tequila business that their male ancestors created many years ago. And she says for them, no doubt, being a woman of tequila today will be a whole lot easier. There's a new hospital popping up on the city's far west side. It's a $230 million project that could mean more than just more medical attention. Coming up, how it's helping the growth and economy in this area. 
Welcome into the KSAT 12 newsroom. I'm Myra Arthur with a look at what's coming your way today on the news at six o'clock. It is a hotline for law enforcement. Bear County deputies on domestic violence scenes are now able to call for expert help to determine how bad the abuse could get. Coming up at six, how this works and how many calls are already coming in. And they're all across the city and soon they will all connect. But one of the biggest missing pieces is on the city's south side. Why the new greenway there is much needed and what makes it different from the trails it will connect to in the future. All that and more today on the News at Six. See you then. Thank you, Myra. Well, paving the way for their new hospital and more development on the city's far west side. Today, Baptist Health Systems broke ground on their newest location at Westover Hills. Construction now officially in the works on a full service acute care hospital, an outpatient surgery center, and two medical office buildings. Matthew Stone is the CEO for Baptist Health Systems. He says this is opening doors for more expansion in this area. Couldn't be more happy that the city has looked at this area of towns, building out highways and giving them access and such. But we feel as a health system that part of our mission is to have the right geography so patients can receive care close to home. The hospital will have five stories, 104 beds, plus a garden level with landscaping and outdoor dining. In addition to the construction jobs this opens up, the hospital itself will bring in another 500 jobs. Let's take a look outside with live cam and there you have it, Mission San Jose. Beautiful in the sunlight. We wish that all that grass around there were green though. Yeah. Looks kind of like a wintertime shot. It it's does. very brown, yes. And the, gr the grass. Welcome back. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much. The uh, grass kind of matches the bricks there at the mission, unfortunately. And of course, we could use more rainfall. It has been so dry. And there is a slight chance of rain. It just remains low. And that's our, one of our weather headlines. Also, low humidity come Thursday and Friday. So it'll feel comfortable, but then there's really not a good chance of rain. We don't have the humidity. Also, cooler by Monday. We've got two cold fronts. One hits late tomorrow and another late Sunday. The second cold front hitting late Sunday will have a better impact on temperatures in terms of dropping them off and even our rain chances. Take a look at this. Tomorrow afternoon, or I should say tomorrow evening, really, and tomorrow early in the nighttime, about a 10% chance, and then no chance of rain. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, by Sunday, we're up to 20%, and Monday, 30%. I know that's not significant, but at least the second cold front that hits Sunday night, that'll have a slightly higher impact on our rain chances. That get, at least give us a little more hope than the cold front that's going to hit us late tomorrow. All right, quiet across Texas and especially our neck of the woods right now. You go down to the Gulf of Mexico, Bay of Campeche here, and you see this big swirl of clouds and even rain within here. It's just most of the rain is out of radar range right now. It's trying to throw some showers toward Brownsville. They're just not making it. This is Tropical Storm Carl. That's Carl with a K. Tropical Storm Carl, max sustained winds at 40 miles per hour, gusting up to 50, a low end storm. And it's really going to stay in the southern Gulf of Mexico here in the Bay of Campeche. It's going to wind around a little bit and then likely make landfall between Tampico and Veracruz later on this week, about Friday time frame, most likely as a tropical storm. It's not going to be venturing anywhere near us. It'll just throw some high clouds into the valley area, and that's about it. 87. That's our current rating right now. Dew point, 60 degrees. So not overly humid, but it's a time of year when we have the higher humidity in the morning, the mugginess in the morning, but then it drops off a bit into the afternoon. Get ready for a roller coaster ride for humidity. So dew points right now for the most part right around 60. Not all that bad, but the morning is going to be muggy tomorrow. Here's why dew points right around 60. Take a look at our trend here. Tomorrow afternoon, dew points low to mid 60s. OK, so we're in the muggy category. Then the first cold front hits tomorrow evening. And then by Thursday, look at these dew points drop off. We're talking dew points in some cases down in the 20s and 30s by Thursday afternoon. So a big hit to the humidity Thursday and Friday, low humidity. And then again by next Tuesday behind the second front right now temperatures. 89 Pleasanton, 86 in Hondo, 90 in Gonzales. You get a little closer to home here. Bernie 81, 88 New Braunfels and Converse right now at 87. 
Tomorrow morning will start the day in the upper 60s. By the afternoon, we make it into the 90s. So today, you know, our high temperature 87. Tomorrow, I think we'll be 92 officially at the airport. Poteet 93, Pleasanton 93. And other than some morning clouds, good amount of sunshine. Then the cold front hits late in the day. That's that 10% chance of showers. And look at that temperature drop. By Monday and Tuesday of next week, we're talking highs of 79 behind that second cold front. Bit Ooh. breezy, too. Nice. Thank you. All right, so are the Cowboys basically saying, Dak, you know, take your time? No, 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 no not at all, back. because look who they face. They face the Eagles. I think they're going to need Dak and then some to beat the okay. Eagles. That's all my. Right. You don't think you, you've lost your faith in Cooper Rush? I haven't lost my faith. I just all hands on deck okay. to try and beat right. the when we come back. We'll give you what it's going to be like an hourly deal from now on. Dak Prescott update and frustration boils over and look who has to pay for it. Coming up. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Lawford. Dallas Cowboys face their biggest challenge of the season when they travel to Philadelphia to try and become the first team this season to beat the Eagles. The Cowboys will be four and a half point underdogs. And you remember what happened this past weekend when the Cowboys were five and a half point underdogs to the Los Angeles Rams. Head coach Mike McCarthy responded, we are nobody's underdog. And his team responded against the Rams. But many feel that the Cowboys will need their doomsday defense and Dak Prescott to return if they have a shot at beating the Eagles who have won five in a row to start this season. Cowboys owner Jerry Jones provided us this update on his star quarterback today during his weekly radio show. He's certainly doing the kinds of things medically that you want to do. That is uh, the indications, the x-rays, all of that, having tremendous improvement. But can he spin the ball? Uh, we know Dak Prescott can play, and we know he'll be ready to play the minute he gets a chance to go in the game. Can he spin the ball? We'll see. Man, doesn't sound like he's ready, does it? For, as for Micah Parsons' groin injury, he's able to fight through against the Rams and still scored two sacks. Jones says that we'll see how he's able to work out tomorrow as well, but expects him to be ready to play. Kickoff at 7:15 on Sunday night in Philadelphia. For the Eastern Texans, they thank rookie running back Damian Pierce for their first win as they were able to hold off the Jaguars in Jacksonville 13-6. In that game, the fourth-round draft pick was able to rush for 113 yards and 29 carries, including the game-winning touchdown. Right now, he's fourth in the league in rushing yards with 412. So where does he stack up and possibly winning Offensive Rookie of the Year? He's a rookie, and he's playing well. And I haven't seen all the rookies out there. I just know that our rookie, we've loved from the start. It's not a bandwagon type thing. We believed in this guy uh, and what he can do. He's letting other people kind of see it a little bit. But, um, um, and again, for us to be talking that way, the offensive line, the guys that are blocking for him, they have to be doing their job. So I just know after a quarter, just think about it, after a quarter of football, uh, we like where he is. So much more to go. But I like the way he's trending. All right, the Texans had the bye week. But this week when they resume, they will face the Raiders in Las Vegas on October the 23rd. Speaking of that, Raiders wide receiver Devontae Adams is apologizing today after this last night. Shoved a cameraman while walking off the field for a last-second loss, 30-29 to to the Chiefs. After he accidentally collided with his own teammate, Adams shoved him with both hands after the photographer accidentally crossed in front of him as he was leaving the field. Fine to follow at the very least. I, he looks more like a grip to me than a photographer. That's what they've been calling him. But either way, it shouldn't Happen. What is he? I mean, I know, it's just it's dumb. just a guy on the sidelines walking with doing a my job, doing my job. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be right back. Can't rule out a stray shower tomorrow evening. Otherwise, at 92, the high low 90s all the way into Saturday and then next week, temperatures take a bit of a dive into the upper 70s for highs by Monday. Thank you, Adam, and thank you for watching the news at five with us. World News Up next. See you back here at six.